subscribe to our YouTube channel and press the bell icon to get the latest updates. Scientists have made a worrying new discovery. Our planet's Earth shine is declining. The Earth doesn't have a light of its own, but it absorbs light and radiation from the sun. It also reflects a fraction of the radiation it receives back into space in what is called the Earth's albedo. One of the factors that helps us measure the Earth's albedo is something called Earth shine. Earth shine is the amount of sunlight reflected from the Earth onto darker parts of the moon. Often, when you look up to see a crescent moon, you can also see a blurry outline of the rest of the moon which isn't as bright. That dimly lit part of the moon is exactly what Earth shine is. It's a reflection of the sunlight from the Earth which dimly lights up the moon. The astronomers measured the amount of Earth shine on the moon's surface for two decades from 1998 to 2017. They found that in this period, Earth shine had actually declined. This matters because Earthshine is also the reflectance of solar radiation from the sun. The more light and heat that the Earth absorbs from the sun, the warmer it will be. The more it reflects, the cooler it will be. If our planet's Earthshine is declining because of some temporary weather effects, we're okay. But if this is a long-term trend, it could mean that the Earth is absorbing more light and heat than it would normally reflect, which could actually hasten global warming. The astronomers measured Earthshine with ground-based instruments at the Big Bear Solar Observatory in California. Earthshine is measured by observing the surface of the moon and especially the dark parts of craters of a very slim crescent moon surface. It had to be a crescent moon because they were trying to measure light reflected off the Earth. So the best time to do that when the weather is clear and there is minimal to no direct sunlight on the moon. Because of these demanding circumstances, the times of observations were quite infrequent. The team observed the moon 801 times in 20 years from 1998 to 2017 and was able to map albedo trends around 80% of the planet. Analysis of their data showed that over the years, drops in value of reflectance seem to come from warmer temperatures along the Pacific coasts of North and South America, the West Coast. Whenever this coast had warmer temperatures, the low altitude cloud cover vanished. Clouds play an important role in the Earth's reflectance, since they reflect about half the sunlight that the Earth receives. Low cloud cover is much more reflective than clouds higher up and so their presence is significant. Clouds are followed by land, which reflects less than 50% of the sunlight that the Earth receives. Snow and ice reflect the most at over 50%, and the ocean reflects the least of all, less than 10% of the sunlight it receives. When the Eastern Pacific coasts are warm and without low altitude cloud cover, this not only decreases reflectivity because there are no clouds, but it goes the other way and increases absorption of heat from the sun because the seas are much darker and therefore more absorbent than ice. The Earth's albedo, which in turn affects the Earth's shine, is extremely sensitive to weather events and climate change. The effects of melting ice, which is the most reflective factor on Earth, can affect how much the Earth is able to radiate back into space. If there's no ice, the Earth sends out less radiation, which could help accelerate global warming. What is worrying is that the largest drop in reflectance occurred in the last three years of data collection, from 2015 to 17. The team measured daily, monthly, seasonal, yearly, and decadal changes in terrestrial albedo from Earthshine. They found a declining trend in the last three years of the data collected. The scientists say this could be explained by accelerating global temperatures that may have started around 2014, after what they call a 20-year hiatus. Since the 1970s, global temperatures rose 0.5 degrees Celsius above pre-industrial levels over a period of 25 years. Pre-industrial levels refers to a time before the Industrial Revolution, when emitting greenhouse gases became extremely common, leading the Earth's atmosphere to warm. But from the 2000s onwards, the rise in temperature seemed to have slowed since the change in the Earth's global mean surface temperature didn't accelerate as quickly. Industries have continued to pollute and emit greenhouse gases into the air. So the reason for this seeming pause in global warming can be explained by the Earth's own climatic changes. 
One of them is called the Pacific Decadal Oscillation. Pacific Decadal Oscillation, or PDO for short, describes sea surface temperature anomalies over the northeastern Pacific Ocean. These are long-term fluctuations in temperature that span across decades. PDOs have negative and positive phases, which are said to either accelerate or slow global warming. According to the UK's Met Office, negative phases could be linked to times of slow global warming because cold phases of the PDO tend to increase mixing of colder deep ocean water with warmer surface waters. This temporarily reduces the rate of global warming caused by increasing greenhouse gas emissions because cooler waters come up to the surface. The slowing of global warming from the turn of the century could have something to do with a negative phase of PDO. So how does this affect Earthshine? According to the data collected by the astronomers, Earthshine is sensitive to PDOs. The flip or drop in the Earth's albedo began at around 2014 and peaked during the 2015-2017 period, which is the last three years of the Earthshine data. These findings are interesting and important for various reasons. One is, of course, the way we understand in retrospect how our weather systems have behaved. But more importantly, these give us a great deal of information about trends and changes in climate that we should be watching out for later in this century. More and more analysis of Earthshine data will give clues into the Earth's albedo patterns and how it contributes to global heating.